It's Movie Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. For their details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.com. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Helmut Kremling. And this is It's Movie, Movie Time. Time. Helmut, I'm certainly... I, uh, Helmut, I do remember Errol Flynn. And you probably do too, although I, I think you might have been a little bit young to... No. to uh, I've seen some of his movies. Yeah. yeah. And so he was a great swashbuckling movie hero of the 30s and 40s uh, and into the 50s, I think. But anyway, most of us know him as uh, the, the, the person you would best identify with Robin Hood. Uh, and the, the adventures of Robin Hood just catapulted him into fame. Captain Blood and other swashbuckling films. Now we have The Last of Robin Hood. What does this do for you? I think there's some great acting in this film, especially by Susan Sarandon. Oh. But I, I can give this film a, a different title, namely um, a, a Rake's Ending. <laughs> you know, the, the writer-director team of Richard Gla uh, Glatzer, or Glatzer and Wash Moreland um, uh, did this made this film which premiered in Canada a year ago in, 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 uh, in um, so a year before it's coming out here and that uh, writer-director team is best known for the 2006 film Quinceañera that was what I was going to ask Elizabeth this is Helmut's wife who often sits in on our shows and that means it's a celebration that 15 year olds uh, 15 year old Latinas have when they reach, uh, when they're presented to society. The only trouble in this film is that she also happens to be pregnant. And so these, these directors, this team, is certainly not new material when you have the old 48-year-old Flynn um, romancing a 15-year-old played by Dakota Fanning. In, in real life, this happened. Her name was Beverly Adland at that time, and the mother, uh, played by Susan Sarandon, Florence, Adeline. So the trio there is real. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, the the depiction of Errol Flynn was a disappointment. Okay. Now this is really most of this. Well, there's flashback and flash forward. Most of this is the last year of his life when he was romancing her and still drinking way too much uh, and actually uh, endangering himself because of statutory rape. Uh, he thought she was 18, she was really 15. Heck, you know, he, he was uh, nearly uh, convicted of statutory rape in the late 40s, mm. and the gossip columnists had a field day, and they called him um, a, the living phallic symbol. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, I mean, it's true, his, his life was filled with romances of very young women, and uh, at, at this time, uh, in whenever it was in 49 or 50, when he was approaching 50 years old, it was it, it potentially could be incendiary enough. Today, it would be colossal with, with YouTube and everything else. It would be a, quite an occurrence. Yeah. The film actually takes place in 1959, the, the, the last two years of his, of his life. Oh, okay, all right, good. Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, but but he, he was this almost beautiful, tall, dashing man whom, whom you couldn't help but admire, yes. and he always was a fighter for noble clauses, uh, causes, the uh, noble clauses, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Charge of the Light Brigade, uh. and and the, uh, he also made a film about. Uh, uh, he played Custer in, in in the film when Custer's Last Stand. Oh, the name oh, of the oh, film. oh boy! Oh, I so forgot he, he was a, 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 a beautiful, one of the most popular actors of the, of the 40s and, and, and late, late, late 30s. Yeah. He, really, he, um, he really defines that yeah. swashbuckler, yeah. That, that, that handsome, yeah. arrogant, athletic yeah. uh, man. And, and the difficulty with the film, I believe, is that I don't catch in any way the energy and charisma of the Errol Flynn that I remember from films and that I think has been ballyhooed. Granted, it's toward the end of his life now. We're looking at the end of his life. Yeah. But I thought the film was flaccid. I yeah. thought it was dull. 
and slow. Mm -hmm. And while uh, Susan Sarandon plays a very good stage mother, and she does well, and you're right, the acting is very... In fact, I think there's a, a real simpatico between Dakota Fanning and Kevin Kline right. that you can see in the film. Uh, though she's a young woman and he's an older man, uh, they do, they appear to have a connection in the film. But for me, nothing's happening. You, you mentioned Flass that not all of um, um, Errol Flynn was flaccid, not all parts of his, <laughs> of his, of his being right, right. were flaccid. Yes. But he's come, he's fallen on hard times. Uh, dr drugs, alcohol, failed uh, uh, movie ventures. Right. Uh, his health is deteriorating. So he's really, he really got, he's really gone downhill. Yeah. But, but yet he still uh, is a womanizer enough to put the young Dakota Fanning, uh, Beverly uh, Adland, in harm's way. And he has the help of her mother, right, who, who is uh, ambitious and her, the mother, Beverly, played by Susan Sarandon in a, in, a, in a wonderful way, I think she should be uh, a candidate for an Academy Award. She wanted to become a show business person, but in a car accident she had a severe injury and so she placed her, her, her goals or projected her goals on her daughter. That's right. So she initially uh, didn't object and then actually helped the affair of Errol Flynn. Apparently and, uh, she and was she was clueless, so to speak, about what was going on between that the two of them were sleeping together. Uh, but even when she found out, she w went right ahead to allow it to happen. Even though she was uh, acted as a chaperone for the two of them, was very clear what was happening and she knew what was happening. So it's morally reprehensive what she did. What he did is immoral. Right. I mean, she is... She is indeed underage, and he's exploiting her. He's using all of that charisma that you described so well. He's using to seduce her. He on their first, it's date rape the first time they go out. I mean, at least date rape. He and she's 15 years old. Right. And on the way home, when her, his assistant uh, drives her home, she actually cries in the yes, car. Yes, yes, and yes. And I think that's an important scene because it shows she was she was not uh, totally enamored with the situation. But then it, it changes, and you know the the the, the mother. I, I I want to actually defend the mother figure, because she was also um, wooed by Errol Flynn in a platonic way, <laughs> Sed, almost seduced by Errol Flynn. I know. So he seduces both the daughter and the mother, the mother platonically, and so, and and she her her limitations, her intellectual limitations were clear. So I so I think I I want to come to her. Uh, want to come to her defense. I, I feel that. I feel that. And I would like to say that both of them, mother and daughter, have been in show business for a while. So that none of this would be really new to them. That is, older men exploiting younger women, uh, stage mothers pushing their, their children to become stars. So I don't find her quite as naive or inexperienced as, uh, as the film might show her, or as you were defending her, I still feel I feel she is as reprehensible as uh, Flynn is in expo And if this is in fact a a, a case of, that is a, of something that is actually very wrong, and yet the movie is brilliant enough, as far as I'm concerned, to take a little bit of our sympathy and put it right there on Flynn and on her mother, because he is so charming, and because the way Dakota Fanning uh, plays. Beverly, she actually comes to love him. Yeah, and he seems to love her. I know. In fact, I he know. even proposes when she turns 17 know, that they were about to get married. <laughs> uh, and, he, and he calls her Woodsy. I mean, it's, it's a very cute yes. name. It's a nice scene when, when he comes up with that name. And I, But I couldn't help but, but think, Woodsy, would she? Yes, she would. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I think it's after because she's like a wood woodland nymph. Right. He calls right. her Woodsy, but Yandi. Yeah, so for me, it's a complicated story, and I appreciate it. Though I think that the way that these these filmmakers approach it is perhaps too sympathetic to him. Uh, that's just my feeling. And out of that, I don't get the energy that I think the movie could have had. And if you couple that with the, the inherent energy of Errol Flynn, 
I found it all just a little bit too flat for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I agree. Um, the 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 most fascinating period of Aeroflan's life uh, was the period when he made all those wonderful films. Well, that's a great point. And yeah. here at the end of his life, he's 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 gone downhill. Yes, I, and, he, and he's he's in some some of it, he's almost pathetic. Yeah, well, and I think you're making I mean, yeah. just the point I wanted to make. Yeah. Why not? back that up a little bit let's see some of that even flash back to some of that life which would be so interesting to see and then juxtapose it with his decline at the end we have all decline here well one one reason the main reason is because the the basis for this film is the biography written by a florence adlin called the big love right of right. the last yeah, few years mom, of his yeah. life and the relationship of her daughter with errol flynn right right and of course um, she focuses on their relationship and on, on their love. Uh, her, her, and the book was dedicated to her daughter. But by, by the way, who yeah. didn't want her, of course, to right. write this yeah, at all? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, helmet. I, I mean, we certainly are at a point. I don't know what else to say about this movie. I wouldn't recommend anybody's paying ten dollars to see it. I'm just going to say that flat out. I don't think it's worth it. I think the subject is eminently worth it. I just don't think these directors brought out the energy that could have come from this, even the negative energy, even the bad that is I would have liked to have seen highlighted, uplifted. Yeah. Speaking of highlighted, do you, do, you, do you have some highlights in the film? Some scenes that you found memorable? Amusing, uh, um, uh, endearing. <laughs> That's a good. Yeah. Uh, actually, well, it's, not that you asked that, the first scenes uh, in which she's getting off the plane, uh, and all the reporters are there, are ones that, and mother is in the crowd as if she were a spectator, and then she moves forward as the daughter's coming down the steps from the plane, and the daughter's clearly distraught her because Flynn has just died, and all the reporters are there for the salacious details because they've heard that he died in her arms mm -hmm. and I just love the way they had mom slowly emerge from the audience and it's Susan Sarandon playing her mother and I just thought that in her dorky little 50s glasses uh, and and bulked up uh, she's just looking like some kind of matronly middle-aged woman but she turns out to be a kind of Svengali in the end anyway yes so thank you that that's 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 something that I have to defend it, yeah. it was good filmmaking how about you um, uh, several scenes, in, including the scene uh, in which Errol Flynn visits uh, his friend uh, Stanley Kubrick. Oh, yes. And he asks Stanley Kubrick to make the film uh, of, uh, of Nabokov's novel Lolita. Excellent example. With, yeah. with, with um, uh, Beverly uh, and, and, and him playing the lead roles. Yeah. And, and the Kubrick says, uh, uh, I know you're a package deal. But we've given her a screen test and no No, way. she had absolutely no tell. Another thing that I had to like about Flynn was that he kept pushing her. He was really true to what he said he wanted to do to advance her. And she was just, she was talentless. <laughs> All right, Helmut, I'm going to ask you now to award a grade to this film, The Last of Robin Hood. Well, uh, I award the film uh, a B+. Plus. Which is a fairly high grade, but I, I didn't go any higher. Well, I, I went that high probably because of Susan Sarandon's performance. Yeah. But I don't go any higher than that because the narrative did not really engage me. In fact, uh, it focused, as we said, on the least interesting parts yes. of, yeah. of Errol Flynn's uh, uh, life. Um, but um, there, there are many wonderful scenes. I remember the father of, of Beverly calling when he was outraged that his daughter would oh, would yeah. be would be uh, uh, the the uh, the partner of Errol Flynn called yes. right the man's a walking penis how could you do that <laughs> yeah. so so the, the the film has its good moments and it has uh, good acting by all three leads but especially by Susan Sarandon yes. so I'll stay with my B plus good and I'm going to award it a C which would be no surprise giving all my ranting here about it uh, I think it's an interesting subject. I guess my C is more about what it could have been rather than what it is. But I certainly do agree about the acting. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite marvelous. I still like the old Errol Flynn films. <laughs> yes, <then. laughs> go see one of those. Yes. <laughs>